The Brits, the place to be. Radio living is the life for me. Airwaves spreading out so far and wide. Keep your FM, just give me that internet side. Online is where I'd rather stay. I've got a lot of music to play. I just adore a Yankee view. Darling, I love you, but give me a show to do. The chap. The brats. On air. That's fair. You are my wife. Goodbye, British life. The Yankee and the Brit on air. Oh, the coolest independent artist you could ever dream of. And on the dog and bone, we have Angel herself. Say hello, Angel. Hey, y'all. How y'all doing? Not bad. What's up, cowgirl? But we're just saying in the background, there's probably gonna be it's gonna be hard for us to understand each other. Her accent is so strong. She didn't even hear me. Hello. <laughs> hey, how are you? I said, how you doing, cowgirl? I'm doing good. How are you doing? Oh, happier than a puppy with. I'm happy. I'm all right. <laughs> That's a good thing, though. <laughs> That's right. I'm slicker than a slicker than a dog shit in a ham bone. <laughs> oh, I love it. <laughs> <laughs> well, I was going to say I was happier. I was going to say I'm happier than a puppy with two Peters, but I didn't know how well that'd work out. But hell with it. There it is. <laughs> I bet he'd be pretty happy. <laughs> I don't think he'd know what to do if he had two. He doesn't really know what to do with one. Hey. <laughs> <laughs> Douche. <laughs> so, <laughs> so before we go any further, we just played your song. Uh, teach me to love is it teach me to love again it's off the screen yes, now ma'am. yeah tell us about that tune <laughs> yes ma'am <laughs> well ma'am. that tune has history i started writing that song whenever i was going through my first divorce notice i said my first divorce i heard you <laughs> and you know that's that's the one that you think that you're never going to love nobody that your world's just come to an end and your life's over well i started writing the song and mama started putting a melody to it for me and I guess I wasn't feeling all this love mushy stuff because I, I was just heartbroke and I didn't sing the song exactly like she wanted me to so she we, had, we didn't have probably a verse wrote of it and but she took it away from me just took it away and filed it away in her little filing cabinet she said now until you can sing it right you just won't be singing it so after the years I'd pick with her I said mom we're gonna finish the song she'd say nope we're going to finish it. I said, that's fine. When you're dead and gone, I'm going to finish it and put it on the radio. And she'd point at me and she'd laugh and she'd say, you do that. <laughs> and uh, me and Macy finished this song and dedicated it in her memory. And it was my way of giving back to her because, you know, she gave up her dream to raise me because she could sing out of this world. And it was my way of finishing something that I started with her, you know, in, in her honor. Wow, a story. And I'd lost part of my dad to cancer a year apart in 2015 and 2014. So, it, yeah, it was it was tough. <laughs> and music helped get you through, did it? Yes, well, see, well, I always knew I had music in me, but until I was about 20, God, I couldn't carry a tune in a water bucket. My family would have family singing, and I'd say, oh, we're singing. And they'd say, oh, no, we're not. And they'd send me to bed, and then they'd all be in there singing. <laughs> But around 20, I found my voice, and I knew I had it in me, but I got married and was having kids, and, you know, that's I did that scene, you know, but I always had music inside me. I, I lived it. I was raised with it, you know, but I was always scared of the what if. What if, you know, the rejection can be a killer from people, you know? Was you ever scared and of I just never it out the, like that? I never took the chance until I lost Daddy and then I lost Mama, and... I probably went to a deep, deep depression for about a year, and when I come out of it, I realized life was too short to let it pass you by. So I say, if you've got a talent and you've got a dream, go for it. What, what can it hurt? All right, now tell me, where are you from, Tennessee? No, I'm from Louisiana. I'm a Louisiana girl. Damn, that sounds like a Tennessee accent. Lord have mercy, that's heavy. <laughs> no, it's Louisiana. I was I'm sitting just... here thinking I was talking to Dolly Parton. Yeah, I really. <laughs> <laughs> well, I'll take a compliment. <laughs> I'm just a little old country girl from Louisiana. 
<laughs> well, me and Randy are quite intrigued as to how you came up with a song for me and Randy to sing called Smelly Nuts. <laughs> well, the way I came up with Smelly Nuts was, do you remember the song you did about the yank and it was loved by all the skanks? I think that was my song, wasn't it? Yeah, that was, was the thinking, monster crank. Yeah. I was, yeah, and I was thinking with Nisi, and I told Nisi, I said, Nisi, we're going to write some really nuts. She said, okay. And about two o'clock one morning, she comes through, she said, you ready to do this? And we just started, we just started with it, and it just took a life of all its own. <laughs> Oh, Did it come off of y'all's The Monster Crank? Or, <laughs> yeah. I don't remember what it was loved by all the skanks. Yeah, that so, was The Monster Crank. So we are a victim of our own... I forget how it goes, Ben so That's long. it. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> this is why what we do is coming back and biting us on the arse. <laughs> oh you know, it's kind of a sequel to y'all's monster. <laughs> well, you know we're going to be singing that this week because oh, we want to have it ready for the Christmas show. Oh, I'm excited. My old man, James, said, you cannot, you're not going to send that to them. I said, oh, hell yeah, I am. <laughs> okay, got me now. He said, he said the yank is going to kill you. <laughs> <laughs> I guess I'm kind of honored in a way. <laughs> <laughs> so, uh, what kind of music did you grow up with? Well, I grew up with um, just... I guess bluegrass and gospel and just the old folk songs, you know, the ones that told the story, you know, just family sitting around with the guitar, and which my mom could sing anything. She had, me and her would sing the Judds, and she would sing um, Stevie Nicks, you name it, she could sing it. <laughs> but me and her would sing, she had harmony out of this world. I do lead, she do harmony, so... But yeah, it was it was just the old stuff, the the true country, you know, Patsy Cline, Loretta Lynn, you know, uh, Amy Lou Harris, all of them. I just I grew up with them. Dolly Parton. I remember at six years old, I was walking around my little boombox <laughs> listening to Dolly Parton, Apple Jacks. <laughs> Sounds like an episode right out of Mayberry RFD. It is, son. Backwoods country, one hundred percent. Oh my goodness! So are you a redneck? No, I ain't a redneck. I'm just a country girl. <laughs> okay, I, I hear there's a difference. It is. <laughs> you know, everybody, when they think Louisiana, everybody automatically thinks, oh, coon ass. I said, no, y'all need to get this straight. There are two types of women in Louisiana. There is coon asses and mean asses. And I'm not coon ass. <laughs> <laughs> I think I've heard that. Louisiana. Many times as I've been down that way, I'm sure I've heard that somewhere along the way. <laughs> well, I was from, I'm from North Louisiana, so. <laughs> Have you got your own band? Yes, I do. It's called Broken Angel. Is that your real name, Angel? Yeah, that's my real name. <laughs> All right. I thought it was going to be like Angelica yeah. or something. Well, on my birth ticket, they made a misprint and put Angela. But Mom had never had it changed, but it was supposed to be an angel, so she just ignored day on it my whole life. So, but yeah, it's Angel. <laughs> wow. <laughs> So and I have a habit of changing names, if you haven't noticed. <laughs> yeah, you've gone from MC to the Golden Arches to God knows what. I know, right? <laughs> <laughs> well, you know, they say whatever name you start out with is what you need to stick with, you know. So I, I got me a good one now, and I, I figured, well, well, I'd use his name. But, you know, being his ex-wife ain't the best person in the, in the world. <laughs> I just figured I'd just shorten it using MC. <laughs> what is the MC? Is that actually just short for McDonald? Yeah, that's short for McDonald because Angel McDonald music was a lot to type out. Jeez. <laughs> <laughs> so, Typical American. Lazy Americans. <laughs> <laughs> I know, right? I said, well, and if it don't work out, I'm just using half the name, so it don't matter. <laughs> Have you got a day job, or is this all you do? No, I, well, I do this, and then I sing with my band. So, and we, 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 do a lot of shows in Shreveport, and we're starting to travel like up north and stuff. Like every six, seven weeks, we'll be going on tour for like two weeks and then coming back. So I'm really excited. We're just getting kicked off with it, but I'm really excited about it because the guys that I'm playing with, I'm singing with, is um, Mr. Terry Falcone and Mr. John Cavanaugh and Mr. Paul. They, Mr. Mr. Terry and Miss has been on the Grand Ole Opry, I think, twice. Wow. He did the Louisiana Hayride. He's played with Charlie Pride. And he knows his stuff. So I was honored. And 
I, I was going to start my band. He was going to be in it, but he has more experience, and he had everything he needed, so he took off with his. He said, why don't you come with me? So I went with him, and they just headlined me center of the band and named it after me, and I'm just soaking up everything like a sponge, trying to learn everything that all these people that's called experience knows, you know, because that's stuff in life you don't come by every day, you know. Get that's to right. Hook up with awesome people that that's lived it, that's been there, that knows it. Well, you'd have to be a, you'd have to have some, uh, you'd have to be an angel to get those kind of people to hang around with you. So I guess uh, Benny's got it right when he <laughs> says uh, you're probably due for some buffalo wings and a beer. <laughs> well, I tell you what, I don't know because I hell angel or hell angel. I've been calling just about every kind of them. <laughs> How about some gumbo and a beer then? That work? <laughs> that <That'd> work? <laughs> <laughs> I kind of thought it might. <laughs> In fact, I just ate some of that before I come on the show. <laughs> So is this all you do then, is just sing now? Yes, that's what I do. I was working in shutdowns and paper mills and refineries, industrial refineries. I was millwright and like what the men do. We go in and we throw the equipment down. We put it back together. We align the equipment. And if I wasn't doing that, I was overseeing all their tool rooms and making sure all the ordering was right, all their inventory was right. But that's what I've done pretty much my whole life. <laughs> What are you doing around home? Are you playing in local bars and clubs and things like that, or bigger venues? Or Well, I, I recently had, had joined with this band, and we just now getting getting our feet, off, our feet off the ground with this, you know, what we're working on now. But we're going to be playing a lot of the hind clubs in Shreveport and Texas area. And then, like I said, every two weeks, I think we've got a booking agent out of Dallas that's going to or Austin somewhere from there that books us to go up north and maybe out to Nashville some for two weeks, do a two-week tour, you know, make some good money, come back home, you know, and play the, you know, the local clubs around Shreveport and Bozier, you know, wherever they call us. What do they call you? Wherever they call us. <laughs> oh, I'm sorry. Wherever they call I'm us. I'm just listening because I'm struggling to understand the poor girl. <laughs> <laughs> I'm sorry. <laughs> yeah, your accent is so strong, uh... You know, I have to sort of sit back and listen to every sentence. <laughs> yeah, I'll try not to talk fast. <laughs> so, uh, if, do you have music available to purchase? Well, I haven't. I've got the two songs that I released, but I haven't put them up for sale yet. I've just been kind of letting everybody hear them, get familiar with it, you know, because I did these songs, like I said, as, you know, one of them was an honor for my mom. The other one was me and me and Nisi was just I was sitting I was sitting in the kitchen cooking and I got this melody in my head for and like a line of the first verse and I called her and I said, This is what I hear and she went to writing it. And that was Cowgirls Leather and Lace and me and Miss Donna Ray, uh, when I went to the studio I laid that down on a track in one take. Went through it went, and that's something for me because 'cause I'm picky. <laughs> and I sang it once and she went and done her back up on it and it was a rap. And that's where Cowgirls Leather and Lace come from. It, it stemmed off of, I noticed you noticed my spelling on on, it, on the chat site. It's this stupid, where I live is out in the middle of, like, Little Rabbit, Australia. It's the middle of nowhere. And we have one cell phone service and no internet except for the cell phone service. And it goes in and out, in and out. <laughs> so in Sounds like some girl Leather I used Lace, to know. <laughs> <What is that? laughs> the cowbell leather and lays it talks about the Wi-Fi failed, got in the car, and it wouldn't crank. Those was actual events. <laughs> <laughs> wow. But, so, yeah. so what's your hopes and dreams for the future? Well, you know, I want what everybody wants. I hope I get the big package. But you know, if I don't, I'm happy with what I'm doing. I'm blessed, you know, beyond anything if anybody had told me i would be where i am today last year i'd have told them it was crazy this year has been the best year ever and I, you know like i said i hope i get the big deal but if i don't i'm happy with what i'm doing because it's reaching people and all i ever wanted was for my music to reach people that when i sang it they felt it whether it give them a smile a tear or took them back to a place you know i just wanted it to take them somewhere and I got an um, invitation, well, I got an email today, and I was asked to um, do a video and tell my story to a mentor group, you know, a group of people that um, this lady works with underprivileged kids, and 
play my music for them. And then that was, she was going to video it back of them watching me and send it back to me. So I thought that that was really, really sweet. You know, and that's all I ever wanted was my music to reach people. Cool. And I look today and it's reached, it's reached Spain, it's reached Indonesia, <laughs> it's reached um, the Republic of Japan. I mean, I, I'm just amazed. The United Kingdom, Canada, I, I just, like I said, I couldn't, if, if it all ended tomorrow, I wouldn't, you know, I would miss it, but I would say I lived it to its fullest and I'm thankful for it. Pretty cool to think you were uh, out there all over the world, huh? Yeah, I know, me, little Louisiana girl. <laughs> Well, we've had, uh, over, the, over the years, we've had listeners from Australia and Spain and God knows where else, the U.K., Germany, all over the place. And it's just uh, just tickles me to death to think that how in the hell did anybody from the other side of the globe find us to even listen to us? It just tickles me sometimes. That's me when I go and I check, you know, I check my music and I see where, where people like you just named has listened. I'm like... Look at this, and I just, you know, I'm like a kid at Christmas, like, oh, God, I can't believe this. <laughs> <laughs> just... <laughs> so, I mean, I, I'm, I'm humbled by everything, you know, I'm just, I'm just so humbled by it all. And that's one thing that I always want to be, I want to be me, you know, I won't never let it change me. I am who I am, and I'll be 100% real with you. I can't tell you how many times so, we've heard that from people that have never come around if, again. If, if you hear country... That's what you get in this country. That's what you see is what you get. <laughs> I'm going to hold y'all to that, too. So you have sung for us. You've sung Black Velvet. Did you Did you think that went all right? Did you enjoy uh, yes, it? Yes, I, I see Black Velvet to you. Yes, ma'am. Hopefully you enjoyed singing up for the show. Oh, I loved I love doing Black Velvet. It's, it's one of my favorites. Cool, cool. I'm it's, glad y'all asked me to do it. <laughs> Dean, Dean says, wait till you get your first number one. I tell you what, if I get Wait my first number two, I'd probably fall out of a heart attack. <laughs> It'd probably be like a big old giant orgasm on it. Yeah, probably. But <laughs> <laughs> then he's going to hold in. <laughs> I know I'd be having three or four of them at a time if I ever did something like that. Just fall out of the stage. <laughs> but I was happy whenever Country Born Girls, I, I'd just been on here like two and a half months. And when they did their year-end review on Country Born Yards, Rather Go Blind, which was a Etta James song that I brought over the country, reached number seven for the year-end charts in just two and a half months. Wow. I was honored, and I was just plum amazed. I was just never thought it. You know, I knew I, the charts was good during the week, but I never would have thought out of everything I had made number seven in just two and a half months. And it just, I was amazed. I bet. And I wanted to thank everybody out there who had voted and followed and supported me because without them and without everybody out there listening, I wouldn't be. I would be nothing. Well, I don't know about that. Well, you know, you without without them and without their voting and their fans, I mean, I would be singing at home, but that, it, I wouldn't be where I am, you know, because it takes it's a team. It's like they I need them, you know, and they need, they love the music, you know, so it's kind of hand in hand. And I just want them all to know how much I appreciate them. Well, that's what we like about doing this kind of stuff, you know, trying to give the artists a platform to get out there and get comfortable with things and maybe go someplace you know someday maybe we'll be uh maybe we'll be recognized for that kind of thing helping somebody get somewhere oh but, yeah y'all show is awesome i'll tell everybody about y'all y'all the hottest things on radio but hearing hearing the new music and some of the things that uh you and the other independents are coming up with it's like i don't even i don't even want to go back to listening to you know fm radio or am or anything else I, i'm <laughs> happy doing this this is this is just what i need just perfect new music yeah. something to wake your brain up something to help you think good stories i mean there's always something every one of y'all is just and a fantastic. lot of indie artists they have stories behind their music you know that they take the time to tell it you get to know people when you're when you, i say when you're struggling when you're out there you know getting your music played and getting your music you know you're working for it you meet people and it, it's an experience because i've met people all over the world and they can sing out of this world you know and it it's not who they are, where they're from, or what color. It's it's a it's a family, you know. Yeah, exactly. And there's I'm not going to say yeah. there's not a few that it's gone to their head because uh, you know as oh, we yeah. as we've gone through the years, there's two or three I could name that uh, it's all going to their head and it, their head's gotten a little uh, That's it. bigger than it oh, should have. Start but, out telling you know. lies, and if you start your career based on a lie, it's going to end on a lie. Some people would rather tell a lie than to tell the truth. <laughs> well, there's people like and I that. just you know. I just, I, I just, I just, I made a vow to myself that I was always going to be me, and I was always going to be thankful. I'd rather moan the blues and uh, 
just go from there instead of acting like I'm all that when I'm not. You know what I mean? That's it. That's that's it. You know. And somebody asked me the other day, it's Angel. I said, Can you? Did you hear this? I said, You just don't get it. I don't get it. To me, I'm just like everybody else. You know, I just it just amazes me every time it comes on the radio. Or I hear it. I'm just like oh, I'm like a kid at Christmas. I just. <laughs> It still ain't sunk in. <laughs> now, you keep your fingers out of those gifts until Christmas. I know, right? <laughs> <laughs> um, I told Danny, I said, you listen to that song, Son of Baby, and everything I listed in that song, I'll be waiting for it under the tree. <laughs> Uh-oh. Boy, is Santa going to have a good Christmas. <laughs> yeah. No, I told him, I said, as long as we got to these grandbabies and we're all together as a family and happy, that's all I ask for because I've been got everything I needed this year. Ooh, good deal. That don't happen often. No, and I don't, I don't ask much, but just the blessings I've done received this, this year, I couldn't ask for anything more. <laughs> I'm just happy to be alive. That's good enough for me. That, that's it. You know, you, you don't, you got to stop and smell the little things and be thankful for the things that you do have instead of griping and moaning about the things that you don't. Well, I'm listening to I try to, to make you. a good situation out of even the worst, you know? Well, I've been a miserable son of a bitch for quite a long time, and it's, I'm finally, uh, you know, listening to you guys keep talking about all this kind of thing, and I'm coming around little by little. <laughs> but y'all are awesome. I'm going to tell you, y'all have so much talent. You and the Brit are just, I mean... <laughs> You mean the Brit with? That was just amazing to go back and listen to y'all stuff that y'all do. I mean, y'all could do a Broadway show. Well, we'll see how that turns out. <laughs> um, we, we could do the Yank, the Brit, and the Country Girl. <laughs> <laughs> the Yankee and the Nitwit. Squeeze me. <laughs> oh hell I forgot what I was going to say now oh uh, where do we find your music uh, you can find me on Reverb Nation under um, Angel MC some songs I'm coming up listen to do and record and then I'm going to go and put them all on one album and just sell the album so while they're still single and while they're still new everybody can just go and download them and listen to them and just listen to them and request me <laughs> hey that's a good way to get it out and there drop me, and drop me a message every now and then and just let me know what you think whether it's good or bad I welcome all feedback. That way I know what direction to go. Oh, you don't want to ask me that kind of thing. <laughs> well, I will ask you. And if it's mean, I'm going to tell the Brit. <laughs> <laughs> I would never say anything mean, but I'm too prone to give an honest opinion on things, so I kind of tend to keep my I, mouth shut for the I most part. Keeping your opinion. mouth shut. That's, that's a hard job. Well, it's very hard for me, but I'm just saying. Well, it's hard for me because my mouth has a mind of its own. I know Sometimes you... I open it and my mama just comes flying out. <laughs> I've always said that about Southern women. They're like a rattlesnake. They'll bite you right at any second. Be careful. <laughs> That's right. <laughs> I'm only serious. Don't believe me. If, if they're thinking it, it's going to come out their mouth pretty soon. <laughs> hey, hey, I have a question for you. Do you think that ending the interview at this point or at this, this length of time is too soon? Because as we've been talking about uh, possibly ending the show, certain people have been saying that the interviews are too long or there's too many interviews. So, uh, this being half an hour in, do you think this is a too short an interview or a too long an interview? No, I don't think the interview is too short or too long. I think you just have to go with what the feel of it is, you know? Yeah. And if you get the story out there and, you know, you've had time to conversate, sometimes you can conversate with somebody for 10 minutes and you know for you need to know you know sometimes you might take an hour to drag it out of them but no i just think you have to go by the feel of the situation and you know if it's going go with it and if it ain't you know <laughs> oh if that was a case we could have done a couple that were only a minute or two long <laughs> yeah <laughs> But no, I, yeah, you know, some people, you know, they, they love the music, but, you know, the stories, you know, and the interviews they don't get into. But me, I like the interviews because it gives you a chance to really know a person. You know, it's like the songs that I'm coming, that I'm fixing to record. I'm doing three, well, two with Mr. Mike Allen. They're bluesy-like songs, but they're based on... One's based on real life. You know, it's, it's you go through trying to make a relationship work, work and work, and when it don't, and when you finally walk out, you're done. They can beg and plead, and it, you're done. You know, it don't bother you anymore. But the first one I'm going to do is called Eye of the Storm, and it's a typical chase of the boy chasing the girl and the girl the girl throwing it at him but not letting him have it. <laughs> it's that, that he chased and she run. 
<laughs> but I think everybody will relate to it. You know, it starts, it, it's a fun song. And then Mr. John Cole give me three songs that has some dynamic history about it. I mean, and that's why I'm talking about the story. I like getting the story behind the songs and behind the people because it lets you know who. It gets you on a more personal level. You know who that person is when you hear them on the radio. You right. know, it lets you know if they're real or if they're fake, you know. And the three songs that he sent me to do was wrote by him, Charlie Dick, which was Patsy Klein's husband, and Mr. Joe Red Hayes. And and they was demoed by Jamie Ryan, which was Charlie Dick's um, second wife after Patsy. But they've never done anything with these songs. And I will be doing them in January, exactly like they had them written for Patsy Klein. And I will be telling its story. Well, and then the, another thing that I got a message the other day from Tanya Tucker's writer. I contacted him a while back about a song that was up for demo. And he had wrote this song for Tanya Tucker a few years back, and she turned it down. So it went back on the market, and he contacted me and asked me if I wanted to do it. And if I did, I had all the blessings to do it. All they wanted was a copy of my song when I got it done. So exciting stuff's happening, and I'm just, I'm just like I said, amazed every day. <laughs> yeah, I would be. I think that's great, though. Sounds awesome. You're getting you know, somewhere. If they don't do anything else, then I record a song that Tanya Tucker <laughs> wrote, wrote, and I do three songs that was wrote by three amazing men for one for an amazing lady. I mean, that's rich history songs. You know, that's stuff you don't get every day. You remember that song that uh, Dolly did with uh, a couple other gals, Romeo? Yes. Who yes. Who else was that that was in that video with her? I think you mentioned her name. Wasn't one of them Amy Lou Harris? Oh, geez, I don't know. That's why I was asking you. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know, but I can look it. I can Google it. <laughs> oh, hell, I can do that. I was. You just mentioned her name. Oh, Tanya Tucker. Was she in that video? Oh, I don't know. I think she's I the one know. that... She's... I always have this line stuck in my head, and I think Tanya Tucker's the one that said it, but the line is, I'd like to have a swing like that in my backyard. It was either her or Lori Morgan. I'm going to have to look I it think. up now. Now I'm confused. Yeah. All right. So anyways, before I get myself confused on my own question, uh, let me ask you 10 questions and we're going to get out of here. Okay. Well, let me say one thing to y'all. Go ahead. Please don't go off air because I love y'all. <laughs> <laughs> all right. All right. You guys have made your point. You win. <laughs> I do little funny jibs every day and tell y'all say y'all ain't leaving. And every <laughs> single one of you have made your point. I know, y'all are too. <laughs> you and guys you know, are amazing, beyond, beyond, beyond. You've tickled us to death with some of the things you've done. Not, not you know, all of you. Well, it's just, uh, oh, you I'm speechless. Y'all deserve every bit of it. I don't get into all the mushy stuff. Oh, I love you, thank you, blah, 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 you know, but I... I know, that's why I wrote Smelly Nuts for you. <laughs> <laughs> I know, we've got to sing Smelly Nuts this week. We better sprinkle a little uh, powder around her for a and better she's even, scent. She's even told us what song, we, what music we're going to sing. Jeez, I don't want to hear it. Surprise me, oh, that's so much be. better. You will be. I'm probably turning red now just thinking about it. You turning red? <laughs> it happens occasionally. It's blaming the reflection from my hoodie. Yeah, is that what it is? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. All right, let me ask you these questions. Number one, what is your favorite word? Oh, uh, let's see. It would be, hey, y'all. <laughs> Did you say how long? I, no, she was like, hey, No, I say, hey, yeah, yeah how long? Hey, yeah, that's, that's what it is. How long? No, it's, hey, y'all. <laughs> oh, hey, y'all. How long? About as long oh, really? as my memory. <laughs> Guess really would follow along with, hey, y'all, how long, huh? <laughs> <laughs> hey, y'all, how long? <laughs> Hey, y'all, how long, really? <laughs> oh, you're asking for trouble there. <laughs> With them both in the same sentence. <laughs> hey, cowboy, how long? <laughs> Shit. <laughs> really? <laughs> Number two, what's your least favorite word? Uh, my least favorite word is anything using God's name in vain. I just, you know, I try to avoid that. <laughs> what turns you on? Um... <laughs> Oh, let's see. Was that too much <laughs> oh, All right, let me put it this way. These are open-end questions. It doesn't necessarily mean what you may be thinking. It could be anything. I know. Um, when, I don't know. I guess a good song, good music, you know. The correct answer is the Yankee and the Brit show turns you on. <laughs> That's right. You and Randy and the Yankee and the Brit show turn me on. Good girl. Oh, how long? <laughs> That's it. <laughs> what turns you off? And when y'all sing, it just stirs my heart. What turns me off? Um, I know it all. Somebody that wants to one up everybody. Sounds like my grandpa. I know. I know. I know everything. 
That's why nobody in the family liked the guy. I, I call Randy Google because he thinks he knows it all. <laughs> I know. That's why I call Jamie Mr. Google. <laughs> don't you start. I said, I don't need Google. I got Jamie. <laughs> I don't know if you realize this, but Louisiana ain't that far away. So watch what you're doing over there. I know. I spent <laughs> 10 years in Texas. so. <laughs> See, you know it's just a that few hours away. That's not accent, Louisiana and Texas. <laughs> You're only about six hours away. I know my way down there. I know, but come on. I'll cook you some dough. <laughs> <laughs> All right. What sound do you love? Sam. Let's see. I love the sound of rain on a tin roof. Mm. You should come here when we have one of those Houston downpours. You can't even hear yourself think. <laughs> I've been in quite a few of them. I was in Bay City for a year, about three years ago. And when it rains, it rains. It does. That's a... That's a when I was going to Houston pretty regular, I was going down to Baytown, and uh, that's the first time I went through a Houston rain. I literally just about had to pull over to, to keep on moving without somebody running into the back of me. But good God, man, you talk about a rain. You can't even see the windshield wipers. Yeah, and it don't stop them drivers out there, son. I was going to need toe jacket if I went through there very much. It's crazy. I was going to need that or a straight jacket because it was, uh-uh. There's some crazy people out there, especially when it's raining. <laughs> Anne Marie wants to know which one of you sounds funny. <laughs> which one of me sounds funny was it part of which one I am for the day <laughs> what sound do you hate what sound do I hate I hate the sound of somebody belching you'd hate living here then well you ain't much for out there being around the rednecks then. if he's not coming out one end he's coming out the other <laughs> then the other end ain't as bad as somebody belching <laughs> oh you ain't been you ain't met Donna then yet you just need to spend about 20 minutes in the same room with I'm like it. A, I'm like it. I'm like a ever filling whoopee cushion. <laughs> That's what Jamie said. Jamie said, women is not supposed to do that. I said, well, you tell that to my daddy. <laughs> you don't know this woman, then. She ain't American, remember? <laughs> That's what my, well, my daddy said. My mom used to say, Hubert, do not teach that to her, son. He did it. I just let it rip. <laughs> well, they say politely, go to the toilet if you need to fart. I'd be permanently in the bathroom. I'd, I might as well sit <laughs> We're going to walk out of what we're doing? You have no idea what it's like to sleep next to the atom bomb. <laughs> and the London smoke. <laughs> well, next time, back, back up on him and just blow his leg off the bed. <laughs> I'm going to call her Enola Gay from now on. You so think you're funny, don't you, husband? <laughs> <laughs> Number seven, what's your favorite drink? Dr. Pepper. Dr. Pepper. That's it. That's a Texas drink. Now, that's going to mess with your bowels. Thanks, Sandy. That Thanks, That'll love. make you fart. Oh, uh, I know, right? <laughs> I never did like that. Turn of greens with that. Number eight, what profession other than yours would you like to attempt? Well, I was, I like 21 months having my bachelor's degree in, I mean, my RN degree in nursing. And I like 27 months having it in early education. <laughs> that I chose to go a different path. But yeah, nursing, giving back, and helping others. All right, I'll book you for about 10 more years from now. Go ahead, I'll be there. What profession would you not like to do? Uh... Plumber. Yeah, I could never. No way. <laughs> Couldn't do it. <laughs> Number 10. If heaven exists, what would you like to hear God say when you get to those big, shiny, polished, just for you pearly gates? Look at you. You didn't make it after all. <laughs> <laughs> I knew he was going to talk with you. <laughs> Probably when I get there, he's going to say something to the effect of wrong gate, son. <laughs> I was so sure I knew you had potential. <laughs> Okay, I'm done with all the good stuff. Yes, is there anything that you'd like to add before we flush you down the Yankee and the Brit I'd, show toilet? I mean, that is the tradition. Yeah, that I'd, is the tradition that will never end. I just want to thank y'all and everybody out there that plays our music. I want to thank Miss Donna Ray and the Chota Records and DC for all their hard work and everybody out there who votes and follows and, you know, listens to me in my emails. I love all y'all, and thank y'all for everything y'all do. Oh, thank you very much. It's so nice talking with you, and uh, love the accent, of course. Oh, thank you. I Even I could almost I understand it. Too. Say again? I enjoy talking and chatting with y'all, too. <laughs> well, you can understand Donna better than I can sometimes. <laughs> it's a girl thing. <laughs> I guess. <laughs> well, thank you, love, and uh, we'll keep playing that music. Thank you. I appreciate it. All right. Keep up the good work. Good night. Bye. 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 Bye.